Candace Owens absolutely shreds and pulverizes ridiculous question of why she married a white man. Ooh, the horror. Guys, this is gonna be a good video. I think you're gonna enjoy it. It's an interaction with Candace Owens and Charlemagne the God. I put that in quotes because that's what a blasphemous and stupid name that is. I'm just gonna call him Charlemagne because the only person who gets to call themselves God is Jesus Christ as far as I'm concerned. I don't know about you guys, but that's what I think. So we're gonna get right into it. It's gonna be a fun video, guys. But first, please make sure you like our video, share it around, and subscribe to the Resist the Mainstream channel. Why subscribe? So we can bring you more videos of stuff like, like this blasphemous idiot, Charlemagne, for instance, that we're about to go watch. Let's get into the video. Thank you guys for tuning into the Resist the Mainstream YouTube channel, as always, and I'm your host, Derek. Now, I wanna go back to something you said earlier, because I know a lot of people will hear you say, well, Candace, you're speaking a lot about, you know, the black family, but then you married a white man. Yeah, I'm Dr. Umar would have a huge problem with that. Yeah. Are you familiar with Dr. Umar? I have heard of him. I have not listened to him, I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. What is his argument, actually, if you could just repurpose his argument? Uh, he for feels me. that everything you know, black. No. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, no, no, everything. No, he, feel, he feels black men should be with black women because when you're talking about it from an economic standpoint, you want to grow the mm -hmm. wealth as a black family. But that and, doesn't. And if you marry somebody from another race, then, you know, your wealth will be with that person. And he doesn't like that. Charlemagne's co-hosts were not kidding about the everything black part. All right, check this out. Let's see here, Dr. Uma, I don't know how to say his last name here, Umar, so I won't try to say it, but certified school psychologist, okay. Motivational speaker, Pan-Africanist. Mr. Unapologetically African, with a K. Uh, okay, so first of all, just given all these credentials this guy lists out, I don't think we have any reason to take him seriously. That's number one. But number two, that radio, notice what that co-host said everything black. Pan, what does that root word mean? It means all. Africanist? I don't think I need to explain that one. So yes, everything black. I think that was a very fair characterization. And Dr. Umar apparently says so himself. Back to the clip. I would love to talk to him more about that because I mean, it's, it's always very interesting to me to hear this paradox of black people who will make an argument that, you know, the system is racist and then also make an argument like this, which is essentially making an argument for the Supreme Court to revisit Virginia versus love and basically say that black Americans and white Americans shouldn't be marrying. I think the greatest thing ever is when people come together on the basis of who they love and get married. You know, for me personally, I never thought of my husband as a race. It's, it's just very interesting to me that see people go, she's, she's married to a white man. When I look at my kids, I'm not like, oh, my kids are mixed. I married the person that it made the most sense for me to marry. I have a mind that is just, you know, if you even knew half the things that I'm thinking about, the stuff that I'm reading, just go, 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 go all the time. It's it's difficult for me to find, it was difficult for me to find a partner that was a challenge to me, you know, the challenge mm -hmm. that I needed, um, whether you want to say like an academic challenge, whatever it is, with my same interests. Mm -hmm. It just was. Uh, what you will know, a lot of times people think that when people come together, it's because of how they look. Actually, I actually read this in a Thomas Sowell book, or maybe it's a Shelby Steele book. Uh, people tend to marry their IQ which is interesting. Mm. You think like if you see two black people together, oh, it's because they are two black people, but actually they, they are probably better matched based on their IQ. Um, you know, I fell in love with my husband just because I think he is one of the most brilliant people ever. You know, I love him very much. The stuff that we talk about, I'm like, there is no other person that I could have married. I think it's fair to say that Candace Owens took that ridiculous narrative, lit it on fire and just tossed it in the trash where it belongs. So that was great. That IQ thing she brings up is really interesting. And I think it's so true. As many of you might know, Candace Owens recently converted to Catholicism officially. Her husband, George Farmer, is a longtime Catholic. And from what Candace has said, a very, very, very devout and very practicing man and a good guy. On some spiritual level, the two seem to have been connected, and I think they would say that themselves. Also, just a funny little quick story about that. According to Candace, they both started dating essentially via FaceTime shortly after they'd met in person, and after a couple of FaceTime dates, decided that they wanted to get married and they were gonna go through with it. Kinda cool. I think there was something deep that both of them sensed, and it seems to have worked out thus far, so God bless them both. Now, we're gonna see some of this content that Charlemagne alluded to with what Candace says about the black community and how they can improve, because I think this will be an interesting clip. Um. I, my question for you is, well, I wanted to say, my name is Khalif, um, and I agree with your comments about a lot of the struggles that Black Americans do face in the country is due to the breakdown of the Black family following the passing of the Civil Rights Act um, and the promotion of welfare specifically toward Black mothers and incentivizing them to not have their fathers in the home. I would say to you, is, as a Black American yourself who has made a platform um, despite the country um, and the actions in our past and what's currently going on, 
what would you say is, well, one, I would know how do you feel like you were able to do so, but then also what would be your recommendation to me, another black American or any other one to reverse the effects of the breakdown of the black family? Great question. So I think a couple of things that worked in my favor, I'm my granddaddy's girl, for better or worse. I mean, my granddad was stubborn as the day was long. I am stubborn, <laughs> like I just saying to her, like I just, I've always been this way. Even when I was a liberal, even when I had the wrong ideas, I just demanded the right to be myself, right? I demanded the right to be myself and not be punished for being myself, right? Uh, least of all, if I wasn't doing anything that was wrong. And that's kind of what's happened. And so the first thing that I would say is if you wanna get ahead as a black American, stop allowing the media to allow you to see yourself as a black American. Start seeing yourself as an American, right? Just an American full stop. The second thing that I would say. I love that point about stop being a hyphen American. You know, in this case, of course, Candace is talking about African American, but it goes beyond that too. Just think about the last time you went on Instagram. How many young Americans on Instagram do you see where they have anything but the American flag in their bio? You know, so they, have, they might have Japanese, Mexican flag, Honduran flag, Peruvian flag, Chinese flag, whatever. Whether they're even calling themselves hyphen American, I'm not sure, they probably do sometimes, but if there's always this emphasis on being different and sticking out and, oh yeah, well, you know, I'm not just a regular American, I'm this, I'm that, blah, 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 blah. I'm from here, I'm from there. And it's insane. You know, there's such a lack of unity in our country. We have basically nothing in common as Americans anymore. Apparently, even considering ourselves American is something we don't have in common. So really love Candace's point there about don't say you're this, don't say you're that, just say you're American. That's awesome. Is that it, when, when you start doing that, um, the relationships that you are able to build, because part of them corroding everybody's mind is to make them perceive other people as the enemy. It destroys relationships, right? And the relationships that you are able to build, which is very much what I did in my life, um, just by refusing the narrative, it became a superpower. It really, it really became a superpower. I was surrounded with friends that uh, inspired me, people that wanted to work hard and didn't want to have any of the political correctness nonsense in the middle. Like, what can we build? How can we build? The world is at your fingertips. If you are a black American breathing safe, you're an American breathing safe, like I said, you are the, the most privileged that has ever lived on the face of the planet. That's the truth. Um, and as soon as you remove the barriers that have been put up in your own minds, you'll be able to see it for the first time. Thank you so much. Candace's comments just now kind of make me think about a bit about my own life and how at one point I decided I'm never gonna self-censor again. I'm just gonna say what I believe when I want to, especially if I'm asked what I believe. And that caused me a lot of issues, you know, especially during the COVID time. I can't tell you how many family and friends I've lost because I refused to toe the line on the COVID-19 narrative. And that's a very sad thing. But you know what? At the end of the day, those people who kicked years of friendship or relationships to the curb because I wouldn't go and just toe this insane line, they were never really my friends to begin with. And being, you know, I'll use the word polarization here, and I don't mean that in a negative way. Sometimes you have to be polarizing. You know, it's like, you gotta stand on something if you wanna have any dignity. And I found that even though I've lost relationships and friendships because of it, I've gained so much that I never would have gained. Gotten closer to people who I never thought I could have gotten closer to. Met amazing people, and it's a blessing. So great point there, Candace, totally agree. And with that, let's wrap up the video, guys. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for tuning in. Be sure to comment below, let us know what you liked, what you wanna see next. We'll see you guys again soon. Thank you, and God bless.